Hello, everyone. Thank you for your interest in this topic. I'm Nikhil Gupta. I'm a postdoc fellow at the School of Physics, University of Melbourne. And I'm going to talk about the mass estimation of galaxy clusters with deep learning. First of all, a quick outline about what I will discuss today. Uh, I'll talk about why that we are interested in the mass of galaxy clusters. I'll give a quick overview of uh, sunyav zeldovich effect. Uh, this is the effect which is used to observe, detect galaxy clusters in the microwave sky. I'll quickly talk about the deep learning model that is used uh, in this exercise. And I'll show you that uh, the SE masses can be estimated directly from the microwave sky maps um, using the deep learning technique. So starting with the, that why galaxy clusters are important and how do we do uh, cosmology with galaxy clusters. So there are three basic ingredients uh, to do cluster cosmology. Uh, the first one is the theoretical mass function, which is usually estimated from simulations. It's the number of clusters per unit mass per unit redshift. And the second one is the observed uh, number counts of the galaxy clusters, which is the number of clusters that you observe in a sky as a function of observable and as a function of redshift. So in order to compare the theoretical mass function to the observed number counts, uh, you need to have a way uh, you know, to, to change the observable to mass because you don't really they directly observe the mass of the galaxy clusters directly. So you need this observable mass functions uh, in order to do cluster cosmology. And both theoretical mass function as well as the observable mass function are cosmology dependent. And doing your favorite uh, analysis like MCMC analysis uh, with a likelihood function, you can constrain your favorite uh, cosmological parameters. Um, this one uh, is basically showing that why masses of galaxy clusters are really crucial to do cluster cosmology. So at present, we are basically limited by the mass calibration. That's why more and more galaxy cluster um, experiments are focusing on getting the mass of galaxy clusters precisely and accurately. For example, there are two plots that I'm showing here. On, on the left is from the Planck Collaboration 15, and on the right is from the Dark Energy Survey Collaboration. Uh, the y and the x-axis in both plots uh, are sigmoid, which is the normalization of the metabar spectra, and the y-x-axis is the omega matter, which is the matter density of the universe. So as you can see that when you add uh, this as the uh, galaxy cluster cosmology, you add BEO to that, and then you try to do the mass calibration using weak lensing, which is the weighing the giants in the left uh, plot, uh, or you use CCCP sample, or you use the CMB lensing uh, in order to do the mass calibration. You see there is a shift in sigma eight. So it's really important uh, that you know your masses of the galaxy clusters in order to do uh, precise and accurate cosmology. Similarly, on the right-hand side, uh, with test clusters, you see a shift in omega matter to a lower value as compared to other experiments. Uh, and uh, um, the possible culprit in this case is also the mass calibration, which is done with weak lensing in this case. So it's really, really important to know the mass of the galaxy clusters. and uh, here, I'm trying to estimate the masses of the galaxy clusters uh, directly from the microwave sky maps. So first of all, how do we see uh, galaxy clusters in these microwave sky maps is by using sunyav zeldovich effect, which is basically a inverse Compton scattering of uh, CMB photons uh, by high energetic electrons in galaxy clusters, as shown in a cartoon on the left. Uh, panel here. So by the CMB photons, uh, they gain energy from this high energetic electrons. 
and their overall spectra, as shown in the middle panel, uh, it shifts towards higher energy. So the energy of the CMB photons is increasing, and uh, as shown in the uh, third panel on the right, uh, the change in intensity is um, changing also as a function of frequency. So you see a decrement at lower frequencies and an increment at higher frequencies as CMB photons, they move from lower frequency to higher frequencies. So this is how you can observe galaxy clusters in a microwave sky map. And for example, uh, this is a real sky map from uh, South Pole Telescope Polarization Survey. It's a 50 degree squared area. It's actually smaller than that. Um, this one is at 150 gigahertz. Uh, so where the decrement as shown in the plot on the right panel, uh, the decrement is the largest here. The change in intensity is largest. So the, at 150 gigahertz, this is how you can also you see the galaxy clusters in the maps as shown as these black dots here, which are the shadows of the microwave sky and basically the galaxy clusters. It's also uh, showing uh, this optical image of one of the galaxy clusters, which is um, a lot of galaxies, the mostly red galaxies in there. So you do a survey, you observe a lot of these objects, you try to uh, compare them with the theoretical mass function. You need to know the masses of some of the clusters so that you can constrain a scaling relation and then use that scaling relation, which is the observable mass function, in order to put constraints on your cosmological parameters. All right, so what we are doing here is basically we are creating very similar uh, sky images. Um, these are mock images, mock maps of the Zunel Zeldovich effect. Um, creating these uh, maps for several uh, galaxy clusters um, in the range of 0.5 to 10 times 10 to 14 uh, solar masses. Um, and the digits here in green, they are showing uh, the galaxy clusters which were actually used in trailing the neural network. And the uh, digits, uh, the mass digits here in black, they are showing the clusters which were not used in the training, but they were left separately uh, in order to um, test your trained uh, neural network. Uh, the sky images, uh, the plot shown on the left, uh, has a snell which effect, of course. It has uh, the scatter, uh, the intrinsic scatter on the snell which effect, uh, about 20% of that, log normal. Uh, has CMB, of course, uh, astrophysical foregrounds from GeoGeral, uh, has instrumental properties like five microcalvin arc minute noise and also smooth with the one arc minute uh, telescope beam. So we have uh, several of these clusters for uh, different masses and we create several realizations every time with different CMB and foregrounds, noise, a realization of these for 400 maps and 200 maps that are used for training the neural network. And then we keep 200 maps, which we don't touch at all. Like the machine has never seen these uh, maps uh, and we use them to test our train model in the end. All right, so quickly on the deep learning model, I'm using a REST unit kind of uh, framework, which is an encoder decoding paradigm. Uh, has several convolution layers, uh, which does actual convolutions activation functions after every convolution, batch normalization, and, and adding uh, using the residual connections. Several of these uh, convolution layers have also different dilation rates, um, like one, two, three, or four uh, dilated uh, convolutions, um, have proper window functions, have several concatenations between the encoding and the decoding phase. And uh, also we're using some dropout layers so that we make sure the model is not overfitting. So to know more about this model, just write me an email or just uh, go through the paper if you have any questions, just shoot me a message. 
I'll be happy to talk about the model more. All right, uh, moving on to results. So let's say uh, using this neural network, we have a model now which is trained uh, to estimate the mass of the galaxy clusters as well as to reconstruct the SE signal. Uh, so we we uh, use uh, we we give uh, these sky maps, which uh, which are the simulations that look very similar to the sky maps that you will observe in the microwave sky. Um, the column on the, the first column here shows such sky maps, which are given to the neural network. And we expect the neural network to uh, reconstruct the Sunel cell which effect profiles. Um, the second column here shows the true SE profile, which is used to you know like build these sky maps. And the third column is the uh, reconstructed uh, as e profile. And the fourth one is, is the residual here. So if you look at the residual only, like the residual is um, at least two orders of magnitude smaller than the, the actual as e profile. So that, that shows that the, the as e signal is reconstructed very well uh, with the neural network. Uh, next, on the main uh, point of estimating the mass of the galaxy clusters. So this plot shows the estimated mass uh, in the top panel on the y-axis as a function of the true mass in the x-axis, um, showing the estimations for the three, uh, three different masses. The first one is the train mass, uh, which I uh, just said it's the green digits in one of the slides before. And these are the clusters which were actually used for training the network. Uh, the blue ones are the clusters uh, which were not used for training the network, uh, but they are in the range of your trained uh, masses. So in between 10 times, um, uh, sorry, uh, one times 10 to 14 and eight times 10 to 14 solar masses. The red ones uh, are the extrapolated masses. Uh, and so I, you, the, the, you, you, can, you can see that the neural network can actually predict the masses of the clusters, which are within the trained mass range. Uh, but for extrapolated masses, it doesn't give you accurate uh, measurements of the masses, but it only gives you a lower limit or the higher limit on the mass of the galaxy clusters. The lower panel here shows the chi-square uh, estimation. Uh, so it basically shows that the um, estimated mass is uh, well within the one sigma limit uh, of the, um, the error estimated here. And uh, I forgot to tell you that error bars are basically the 16th and 84 percentile masses for the 200 CMB, uh, this sky map realizations that we have used for testing the neural network. So this looks pretty good. Uh, so how does it compare with the scatter? So here um, we, we try to perform uh, a simple uh, experiment that, uh, okay, we have uh, several things in this sky maps like CMB foregrounds, and then we have SZ signal, we have noise, the noise from the instrument. Um, and then uh, we have the uh, scatter from the SZ signal as well. So what what's what the what proportion of scatter is coming from this um, uh, the other things in the map other than the SZ that is CMB or foreground and what is coming from uh, what what uh, sort of scatter is coming from the intrinsic scatter in the SZ signal? So here I'm showing uh, distributions of log of uh, estimated mass over two mass. Uh, for uh, two different uh, maps. In first map, uh, there is uh, SE scatter as well as CMB and everything. And in the second map, there is no SE scatter, but it has everything, CMB, foregrounds, noise, and everything. So this shows that uh, for the pink uh, histogram, uh, with a fit of caution on both of them, uh, the pink one shows a scatter of 0 0.1 plus minus 0 0.012, uh, which is pretty small as compared to the scatter in the orange histogram, uh, which is 0.18. So 
this basically shows that the, uh, the major uh, component of the scatter here is due to the intrinsic scatter that we input uh, to these uh, uh, sky maps uh, from where we are trying to predict the masses of the galaxy clusters. All right, uh, so a very uh, similar plot, but uh, for uh, different maps. Uh, in this plot, I'm showing uh, the estimated masses, the distribution of estimated masses to true masses uh, for uh, galaxy clusters in an external hydrodynamical simulation. So these simulations are not used for training. The network has never seen them during the training phase. And we use a train network, which is trained on uh, very, like the symmetry Carnot profiles. And we use the train network to estimate the mass of galaxy clusters uh, in these uh, magnetical hydrodynamical simulations. And we estimate the scatter by fitting a Gaussian uh, like before. Uh, and we get a scatter of 0.23, which is pretty much consistent with the log normal scatter in the white mass relation in these simulations. Uh, of 0.194, um, estimated by Gupta at 2070. All right, so this basically shows that we can now estimate the mass of galaxy clusters just by looking at the, these galaxy clusters in the microwave sky maps uh, using the deep learning method uh, that I just uh, explained. So this, this is very uh, similar to like you, you have a picture of an individual and you want to know that how much is the weight of that individual by just looking at a picture of the individual. And the only difference is that we are doing it for galaxy clusters. Uh, with, uh, so looks pretty good. And also I've shown that the log normal scatter, which is both observational plus intrinsic, that is the scatter which is coming from CMB foregrounds, noise, plus the intrinsic as the sec uh, scatter uh, in the estimated mass is, is uh, consistent with the intrinsic scatter for SEY signal. Something that I haven't discussed today is another similar work uh, using very similar techniques, um, which is also uh, in, uh, which is also on archive now. Uh, this one is using CMB cluster lensing. So it's, it's a gravitational lensing of CMB uh, instead of uh, galaxies as in the weak lensing. So here uh, CMB is lensed by the galaxy clusters in the line of sight, uh, which transform the CMB in a very particular way. And we can use that transformation of CMB in order to estimate the mass of the galaxy clusters. So using uh, sky maps of these microwave sky simulations as shown in the right panel, right bottom panel, uh, the first column is like the, uh, the CMB map. And we try to uh, estimate the, uh, try to get a, a foreground and a noise suppressed uh, maps from the, uh, these um, uh, sky maps with noisy and foreground. Uh, maps. And uh, the last two columns are really important in this plot, which shows uh, that the lensing signal, the true lensing signal, and the recovered lensing signal. So these kind of techniques uh, can be used to estimate the CMB cluster lensing masses as well. And uh, if you want to know more about this, just have a look at these couple of papers that we published this year. And feel free to contact me as well. Uh, well, that's all from me. Uh, thank you for your time and interest. Let me know if you have any questions. Ciao, ciao.